Hey YouTube, today we're going to be talking about a subject that I think pretty much all of us firearm enthusiasts are guilty of. And when I say guilty, I don't mean that it's a bad thing, it's just something that we all get caught up in. And this is movie and TV guns. And I have a few examples here in front of us that I'm going to use to talk about today's subject. It's not everything that I have with that have been featured in movie and TV shows. It's just a couple of things that I wanted to point out. Now, a lot of people watch movies, TV shows, and if you're a firearm enthusiast, you're like, hey, look at what that guy's using. And I've done it, you've all done it, and everything. You're like, man, I'd like to have that. And what it's led to is led to the popularity of certain firearms that probably on any other circumstances would not be popular and i think video games can also be included in this you know you have popular video games out there like call of duty and stuff like that i'm not a video gamer i don't look down upon people that do it it's just not something that i've ever been into so what we have here in front of us we have a ruger mini 14 we have a mac 11 we have a colt python and we have a smith and wesson 629 and every one of these were featured in many TV shows, movies, video games, and all that. And I'm going to go through a couple of them. Now, before we get started, I'm going to tell you that every one of these has been safety checked before I started this video. And as I pick them up one by one, I will show you there's nothing in them. So let's get started here with, um, I think, the most obvious one here, the largest one out of all of them. This is a Ruger Mini 14, and I'm going to show you there's nothing in it. See, the chamber is open, and this is a folding Mini 14, and this one is from the 1980s. And let me flip it over here for the Mini 14 people that know about these things. There is the serial number. It's a 184 serial number, which puts that in the time era of 1985. So in 1985, they had a TV show that came on, and I think a lot of us watched and it was called The A-Team. The A-Team was a TV show that featured a bunch of guys that were in the military that the government was looking for and they would go solve crimes. And it had Mr. T in it with all his gold chains on and there was a leader of the pack and a crazy one and all that. Well, every time they got into a confrontation, they used a folding stainless mini 14 and it looked identical to this one and um it just became real popular and one of the things i remember about it folks is this magazine that stuck out the bottom of them it had this long 40 round stainless magazine that matched the firearm and i always wanted one of those i always thought it was cool in the show and i said i'm gonna get one of those one day and i did i went and got a stainless folding mini 14 now, one of the things that um, is really hard to find is this long stainless magazine. They are absolutely impossible to find. And when you do find one, boy, do you have to pull your wallet out to get one. Well, I've got several of them, and I've just gotten lucky when finding them and all that. But I have several of them that go in this, but it makes the gun look really good. But if you think about the mini 14 it's really just a plain jane looking rifle without having all this folding stock on it and the long stainless magazine sticking out of it and the cool sling and all that a regular mini 14 nothing really special it's just a 223 semi-automatic rifle with a wood stock on it i have a regular one too that i've shown on this channel and i have a video on this one here that i've been through very extensively but mainly what drew me to this was the a-team TV show called the A-Team and that's why a lot of people like this thing when I go to the range with it they're like oh that's the A-Team gun a lot of people will come look at it and everything so movies TV shows video games they do influence how people think and they also unfortunately they do um, affect the value of them because people are willing to pay more because it's something they watched in their childhood Okay, the next one we're going to look at here, folks, is a Mac 11. This one is a Cobra Mac 11. There's nothing in it. I'll show you a little bit of close-ups of it. 
has says Cobra M11 on it, and it's got this stupid barrel extension that sticks on it, and a long, large magazine. Now, these things were in a ton of TV shows and everything. They were in Miami Vice, if anybody remembers Miami Vice, but Sonny Crockett, and he drove his white Ferrari Testarossa, and all the bad guys were always using these things. They've been in, like, um, The Godfather and video games and all the gangster movies and everything. Uh, but basically, folks, it's a... This one here happens to be a semi-automatic sub gun that shoots 9mm. It's actually the most impractical thing you could possibly ever own. It's really heavy. It's really blocky. The trigger on it is atrocious when you shoot these things. But they command quite a bit of money because... Of the nostalgia of them and mostly people have them because they saw all the gangster movies and watch shows like Miami Vice and everything and saw it's usually on the bad end of the law that uses these things usually law enforcement don't use Mac 11s but it is what it is and I thought they were cool and I happen to own one okay we're gonna go to the revolver side here and this one's a little bit different here this is a Smith & Wesson 629. Now, a lot of people like the 29, the Model 29, which is the blued version of it. And the reason that that thing became so popular was because of Dirty Harry and Clint Eastwood in the 1970s. But that's not why I have this one, folks. I'm going to tell you a little bit of an embarrassing story. Now, the 44 Magnum Model 29 came out in 1955, and it was a pretty popular gun here and there, but it didn't gain its popularity until the 70s when Dirty Harry started using it. It was the most powerful handgun in the world, and he used to say it. And did I shoot five shots or did I shoot six? Everybody that's ever seen it, they know that, they know that line. Well, this is a stainless version of it, and I've had a couple of them over the years, but... The reason that I bought this one is I used to watch a show with my father when I was a little kid. It was called Sledgehammer. And he had one with a, the ivory grips and it had a sledgehammer engraved on the ivory grips and it was a 629. Now it didn't have this full underlug on it. It didn't have the unfluted cylinder, but that's what he carried as a cop. He carried a, he was an a detective and he carried a 629 44 magnum he was a wing nut he used to talk to it and everything like that and it was just a funny funny show if you watch it in today's times most people think it's pretty stupid and i'm probably with you on that but that's why i have this the 629 i actually have a t-shirt of him holding up his 629 and a friend of mine photoshopped it and had me holding up a 629 next to it with the same sunglasses on and everything but that's what it is but these things became wildly popular the 44 magnum smith and wesson when dirty harry came out that's mainly most people aren't even going to know what the show sledgehammer is you're gonna have to google it to look it up but that's what made these wildly popular the smith and wesson 29 or the six Wesson model 629 this is a 629 last but not least we have the almighty colt python now these things were always real expensive when they came out because of the handwork that went into making them and this one happens to be a 1980s model stainless one this is not nickel this is stainless but you can see it's got a absolutely gorgeous shine to it now when these came out i mean if you just look at this it looks different than every other revolver that you'll ever see and they were always popular amongst um, collectors and stuff like that. And they were always really expensive when they came out because of all the handwork that went into them. But in the early 2000s, a show came out on TV called The Walking Dead. And the younger generation that had never seen these things, they weren't in production at the time. Now they've started making them again. But the younger generation that saw this thing thought they were absolutely awesome looking. And everybody had to have one but boy the price of these things went through the roof because the main character on that show he was a town sheriff he carried a six inch colt python it looked just like this one only it was six inches long and he carried it around i think the thing had like endless ammo in it <laughs> i don't think he ever reloaded it but it absolutely drew the price of these things through the roof and 
to get one of these things it was like out of most people's budget to buy one they were expensive to begin with but when that show got very popular boy did it go through the roof and it's been featured in video games you can get a cold python and like some of the video games on there and also one of the dirty harry movies was called magnum force the um, villains in the Magnum Force movie also used a four inch blue type python and they had a little shoot off and all that with Harry Callahan which was Dirty Harry but anyway folks I just want to run through and show you that a lot of people really get into these movie guns and sometimes it ends up costing a lot more than it really should I think these cold pythons have calmed down a little bit now that the new ones came out and the average person can actually put their hands on one for a normal price and but you know it's just it is what you like when you grow up you don't you forget about you know stuff that made you feel like a kid again and then when you see stuff like that later on you're like this kind of turns you into a kid again and there's nothing wrong with that folks nothing at all just always remember firearms or firearms are still it was in the movies they're probably really not going to do what they did in the movies but as long as you keep an open mind and you know you were smart about it there's nothing wrong with collecting firearms that were in movies video games and tv shows we've all done it but if you have any questions on any of these firearms folks i have videos on each and every one of them where i go into them a little bit more in depth i just want to talk about ones that became popular in the modern times because of where they appeared in TV shows, movies, and video games. Thank you very much for watching my video today, and you folks have a great day.